Welcome to another Tuesday tutorial. Today we are diving into another Blender tutorial, this time looking at this shot. Many of you have already recognized this as being inspired by this shot from Jim Carrey's The Mask, but you've also seen this over the top reaction in tons of cartoons as well. And it's one that uses some fun techniques to accomplish. So let's get right into it. Starting off in Blender, you're gonna go to motion tracking workspace, import our footage and click set scene frames to match the in and out points of the footage to the project. Next, we'll add some tracking markers to the face. We'll track the nose, which will be our main track as well well as one for the eyebrows, which will be used for the rotation. With the tracker selected, we can go to the solve tab and click link empty to track. In the 3D workspace, we're going to orient the nose track to the eyebrow track using a track to constraint. This is how we'll get rotation data on the tracker. Now we'll align our camera to match the perspective of our scene, making sure that the focal length and sensor size matches the camera we shot with. It's also a good idea to create some objects that will help match the scale of the scene properly. Next, we'll add a generic 3D model of a head and parent it to our tracker. We'll make sure that the model and the tracker are positioned and scaled correctly with the rest of the scene. We'll also adjust the head mesh to match our actor's face more closely. We'll animate the depth of both tracks through the shot, matching the rotation as best as we can. Then afterward, we'll animate the rotation of the head itself for further corrections. It's helpful to set the origin point of the head to the same position as the tracker. That way, only the rotation needs to be animated. Now that we have the table and the head modeled, we can start setting up our lighting. In our case, we shot a still image of a mirror ball on set, which we'll use as our world texture. We can use this as reference to help us position our lamp objects correctly, and we'll also make some shaders for our head and table objects that generally match the footage. We can also add in some spheres with different materials to test out the lighting. Now we'll start creating a model that matches the mouth of our actor. We'll be making this from scratch and only using the full head model as a reference since the head model has a lot of polygons and might not have the type of topology we would want to use for animation. Using a mirror modifier and a subdivision modifier will make the modeling process easier since there will be less points we'll need to edit. We'll also make sure that the mouth is parented to the main head mesh. In our case, we need to add some hair particles to our mesh. We'll use weight painting to generally define where the beard hair should be and set it as the density vertex group in the particle settings. We'll also make sure that the length of the hairs matches the real beard as well. The vertex group won't be accurate enough on its own, so we'll use particle edit mode to make further adjustments. Next, we're going to go to work on the shader for the mouth. But before we do, let's thank today's sponsor, which is Zyro. And Zyro is a great and easy to use website builder. If you're watching this, you are likely a creator. And nowadays, that means you need a website. Whether it's a portfolio website to showcase your work or an online store, all the sites on Zyro are created to look great and load really fast, which gives your users a great experience. And that, of course, increases your sales and helps you rank better on search engines. They also have 24 seven support from real people, not bots. But on the other end of that, they do have an AI generated Rated website tool, which is surprisingly useful. I'm no web designer. I think most of us filmmakers aren't, but I do need different sites for different reasons, whether it's a personal portfolio site like I was talking about or something I need to create for a project I'm pitching or to create a specific and unique site for your latest project. To get your film seen, you often need to get your project in front of the folks that can write about it in blogs to help spread the word. And what better way to show it to them than through a unique site? Have your film on there, your poster, your BTS images, it's definitely a great way to stand out. But still, the main key for pulling that off is having something simple and intuitive that looks pro. And that's where Zyro delivers with really solid templates that are all insanely simple to customize. So you can build out your pitch portfolio or web store site with no coding or web design skills at all. So if you are in need of a website, which again, if you're a filmmaker, you probably are, check out Zyro.com and use the code FILMRIOT to get 72% off plus plus three months free with any yearly plan. Links to all of that in the notes below.
Now jumping back into the effect, next we're gonna work on the shader for the mouth. To color the lips and the skin separately, we're gonna go into vertex paint mode and create a black and white color map that separates the lips from the skin. Then in our skin shader, we can feed the vertex color into a color ramp node. This allows us to make changes much more easily if needed. We can also use some procedural noise and Voronoi textures to add more details to the lips and skin. Once the mouth model is matched closely enough to the footage, we'll start working on animating the jaw drop. We'll use shape keys to create a version of the mesh with the jaw touching the table. Then we'll animate the influence from zero to one. This is where we'll incorporate that bouncing animation as well. To get the jaw to stick to the table, we'll use a hook modifier to attach the bottom vertices to a new empty object. And we can animate the influence of this modifier so that the jaw only sticks to the table once it lands. We'll use the same process to model the teeth, which we'll keep in a separate object. This means that the teeth will need their own shape keys for the drop. Luckily, we can easily link the mouth drop animation to the teeth by right-clicking on the value and selecting copy as new driver. Then we can paste the driver onto the teeth object's shape key value. Next, we'll add a cube with a mirror modifier and model a basic tongue shape. We'll make sure that there are plenty of subdivisions along the length of the model. Next, we'll add a curve object and extrude one end into a spiral shape. We'll put a curve modifier onto the tongue mesh and select the spiral curve. This is how we'll accomplish the unrolling animation. To make sure the end of the tongue doesn't continue after it's been rolled up, we'll change the radius value of the end of the curve to zero. We'll create another curve path that'll be used to conform the tongue to the shape of the mouth object, making sure that the top points are hooked to the head track. Things get pretty weird when two curve modifiers are used on the same object, so it'll take some experimenting until things start to work properly. Once the two curves are set up, we can do all of our animations on the spiral curve. To add some extra character and bounce to our tongue and teeth animations, we can use wave modifiers with varying time offsets and custom start positions. For the teeth, we'll do a faster wave and we'll use a vertex group so it only affects the bottom teeth. We can also give the tongue a breathing animation using shape shape keys. Next, we'll model the eyes, so create a UV sphere, grab the top half of the vertices and stretch them outward. We'll add a few loop cuts to the length and we'll smooth the whole thing out. Then we'll add a simple deform modifier, set it to bend and animate the angle of the deform to wiggle around. We'll use a sine wave modifier in the graph editor to animate the wiggle with the intensity fading out over time using the frame range controls. We'll also animate the scale of the eyes for the popping animation. For the pupil, we'll create another sphere at the end of the eye and scale it down. We'll parent it to the eyeball using vertex parenting so the pupil will stick even when the mesh is being deformed. As a final step, we're going to duplicate the head mesh and delete everything except the area around the eyes and set it to be a shadow catcher. We'll also make stand-in objects for the body and the hat to cast shadows onto our CG objects. At this point, we're ready to set up our render. So make sure everything is organized into collections, one for the scene geometry, one for the head and mouth and one for the eyes. We'll create a few render layers for each pass we want since each render layer has its own settings for collection visibility. We'll render the scene in four passes, one just for the eyes, one for the mouth, and one for the scene geometry with the eyes and mouth being rendered indirectly and one without the eyes or mouth. For both the mouth and eye renders, we'll set the scene geometry collection to render as a holdout. In After Effects, we'll import our footage and our renders. We'll use a difference matte effect to key out the shadow shadows and reflections from the table. We'll also duplicate our shadow layer and mask out the table, leaving only the contact shadows from the eyes. We'll also want to blend the top edge of the mouth render with the live action plate. To do this, we'll track the top lip and apply the motion to a null object. Next, we'll create a solid, put it above the mouth layer and turn off the visibility. We'll draw a mask around the top of the mouth, then set the mouth layer to alpha inverted, then feather the mask until it's blending nicely. We can also distort the back background plate and the CG elements using CC smear effect to make the transition from the real mouth more believable. To finalize the comp, we're going to introduce some shadows on the shirt and the hand. We'll also reintroduce the hand and its reflection since they're now covered up by our reflection pass. Then we'll make some color adjustments to the CG elements, match the grain of our footage, and we have our final shot. So that's it for today, how to get a huge over the top cartoonish reaction shot inside of Blender. This one was done in collaboration with our friend Joey, who we've worked with several times 
times on the show. He's incredibly talented, especially inside of Blender. So check out the links in the notes below to see more from him. Of course, don't forget about Zyro. If you're looking for a website, you can get 72% off by using our code plus three extra months free on a yearly plan. Links for that below as well. And as always, if you're not subscribed, consider doing so and hit the bell so you're notified when we put up more content. And until next time, don't forget to write, shoot, edit, repeat.